Introduction What is data? A set of facts or figures from which conclusions can be drawn. Data is plural of datum. Numerical data helps us to classify and analyze data for further action. Data is a collection of facts. Types of data. Primary data. Secondary data. Data which are not originally collected but obtained from published or unpublished sources are called secondary data. Objectives. At the end of this lesson you'll be able to identify data and its types, identify class intervals and its types, solve histogram, solve circle graph, solve probability, pictograph, representing numerical data by using pictures or symbols is called a pictograph. Pictographs are easy to read express large number of data but cannot express exact values. This is the pictorial representation of games selected by people in a colony. Bar graph. A bar graph is another form of graphical representation of data showing quantity of data according to the length of the bars. These bars can be either horizontal or vertical. This bar graph represents ages of different animals. From this bar graph we can get the age of animals. Comparison of data. We can represent two sets of data in a bar graph. This bar graph shows average monthly expenditure in 2006 and also in 2007. This type of graph is called double bar graph. We can compare two set of data using this double bar graph. Frequency distribution. Types of data. Raw data. Raw data is a collection of initial observations not yet organized. It is the information we get when we do survey. It can be classified into two types. Discrete data. Continuous data. Discrete data. Such data can be very precisely measured in whole numbers. The number of children in a family and size of shoes are some examples of discrete data. Continuous data. Such data can have any value between two whole numbers, that is, it can be measured with absolute accuracy. There will always be some error. Weight of students in a class and temperature in a city are some examples of continuous data. Frequency distribution table. Look at the following data. It tells you the performance grade of the students in a month. 6, 5, 6, 9, 7, 4, 2, 4, 7, 8, 3, 4, 9, 8, 2, 3, 5, Nine seven eight nine seven five six seven seven four four seven eight three four. From this data, we know only the performance grade of the students in a month. Let us form a table as follows. This table shows clear picture of the given data. From this table, we come to know the number of students in each grade. This table is known as frequency distribution table. The number of times a particular observation occurs in a given data is called its frequency. A frequency distribution shows how frequently a particular item occurs in a group. Frequency distribution table using class intervals. Example. Given below are marks scored by 30 children in a class in mathematics. The following points should be kept in mind before grouping data into class intervals. 1. When you group data into class intervals, the most important factor that you have to take into consideration is the range of the distribution. Find out the difference between the largest and the smallest observations. Largest value is equal to 98. 
minimum value is 3. Range is 98 minus 3, which equals 95. 2. The number of class intervals should not be too many. At the same time, they should not be too few in number. There could be from 5 to about 20 class intervals. 3. Based on the above two factors, you will have to choose the width of the class intervals. You should choose this width with great care. It should not be so wide that the significance of the data is lost, nor should it be so narrow that the number of intervals is too many. Only you can decide the optimum size of the interval. Let us take the width as 20. 1. The number on the left of class intervals is called the lower class limit and the one on the right is the upper class limit. 2. The difference between the two limits gives you the width of the interval or the class size. The mid value of each class interval is called its class mark. It is obtained by adding the lower and upper class limits and dividing the sum by 2. For example, consider the interval. Lower limit of the interval is equal to 20. Upper limit of the interval is 40. Width of the interval is equal to 40 minus 20, which equals 20. Class mark is equal to 20 plus 40 upon 2, which is equal to 60 upon 2, which equals 30. By looking into the table, we can get some information. 1. Number of students who scored less than 50 marks. 2. Number of students who passed. 3. Number of students who scored above 80. 4. We can identify the performance of the class. The method of classifying data into class intervals is called grouping of data. Two different types of class intervals. There are two different types of class intervals. 1. Overlapping class intervals. 2. Non-overlapping class intervals. Non-overlapping intervals like 0 to 19, 20 to 39, 40 to 59, etc. are so called since the upper limit of the previous class and the lower limit of the next one are different. This kind of class interval is only useful for discrete data. In overlapping class intervals, the upper limit of the previous class is the same as the lower limit of the next one. For example, 0 to 20, 40 to 60, etc. Histogram a histogram is graphic representation of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Rectangles are drawn in such a way that their bases lie on a linear scale representing different intervals and their heights are proportional to the frequency of the values within each of the intervals. Example, given below is a frequency table and the corresponding histogram showing the number of employees in a particular factory according to their income. Solution. Frequency table showing 100 employees in a factory according to their income level. If you have a good look at the histogram given above, you will notice that 1. A histogram looks like a bar graph, but there is no space between one bar and the other. 2. The histogram has a title. 3. On the x-axis, the class intervals of the grouped data are shown. What the distribution depicts is also written below it. 4. On the y-axis, the frequencies for each class interval are shown. 5. On both the axes, suitable scales are taken. 6. The heights of the rectangles drawn are proportional to the frequencies of their classes. Circle Graph a circle graph divided into pieces, each displaying the size of some related piece of information. Circle graphs are used to display the sizes of parts that make up some whole. Circle graphs are also known as pie graphs. Example 1. The favorite colors of students in a school is given in the following table. 
Before representing it in a circle graph, we have to do the following steps. 1. Find the whole parts. 2. Count the number of groups. 3. Find what fraction of each group has as a whole. 4. Find the central angle and draw the graph according to it. Solution. Total number of students is equal to 200. Number of groups is equal to 5. Fraction of students who like red color is equal to 37 upon 200. Central angle is equal to 37 upon 200, that is 360 degrees, which is equal to 66.60. Fraction of students who like green color is equal to 26 upon 200. Central angle is equal to 26 upon 200, which is 360 degrees, which equals 46.80. Fraction of students who like blue color is equal to 30 upon 200. Central angle is equal to 30 upon 200. 360 degrees is equal to 540. Fraction of students who like yellow color. Fraction of students who like yellow color is equal to 39 upon 200. Now central angle is equal to 39 upon 200. 360 degrees is equal to 70.20. Fraction of students